right, welcome to our final episode from Chapter 9. And in this episode, we're going to cover anaerobic respiration. Now, this anaerobic pathway is not as efficient as the aerobic pathway. The aerobic pathway, if you can remember, has three steps, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. And it's that electron transport chain where you're going to produce the most ATP. Now, two of those three steps, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, use oxygen, and you're going to get more bang for your buck. Now, without oxygen, you're still going to get enough ATP to potentially keep you alive, but by no means are you going to get anywhere near the same amount as you did in aerobic respiration or cellular respiration. Okay? Now, uh, what is anaerobic respiration mean? This means without the presence of oxygen. All right, so no oxygen. So let's go ahead and let's write that down while we're here. All right, anaerobic, this an part means no. And the aero part, that means oxygen. So you're having no oxygen. So not as efficient. All right, there's two steps. Number one is called glycolysis. No different than what we learned before. And remember, you have a net gain of 2 ATP, and you're going to produce 2 NADH. The second step is called fermentation. And there's two types of fermentation. We're going to go over both of those. Fermentation, its sole purpose is to turn NADH back into NAD+. Now, if oxygen was available, the electron transport chain would take care of this for us. But with no oxygen available, we need to be able to regenerate this NADP, or I'm sorry, NAD+, so we can go back to glycolysis. All right, see this little asterisk right here? Make sure you make, mark this down in your nose. This is very important. You're only going to produce 2 ATP per glucose molecule. So hardly efficient at all, but for some organisms, this can be just enough to keep that organism alive. All right, so let's look at some of the details of this. All right. The first one here is glycolysis. Now, this is we saw this before on an earlier screencast where you spend 2 ATP to cut the glucose in half. Then you're going to go through a series of steps where you rearrange these carbon molecules that will form pyruvic acid. And when you do that, you get a 4 ATP. But because you spent 2 ATP, your net gain is only 2 ATP. And then here's your electrons in the form of NADH. So if you want to know about this a little bit more, go watch the screencast on glycolysis. Now the fermentation step. During fermentation, remember your number one job is to regenerate the NAD+. This would have been done by the electron transport chain if we had oxygen available. Now there are two types of fermentation. Number one is called alcoholic fermentation. When you do alcoholic fermentation, your pyruvic acid is turned into, surprise, alcohol, hence the name alcoholic fermentation, and CO2. Now, one of the things I do want to let you know is that alcoholic fermentation is just not used only for making alcohol. Whenever you bake bread and you're letting the bread rise, the yeast, that is, they are doing alcoholic fermentation. Well, how come the bread doesn't get you drunk? When you are baking the bread, the alcohol is going to evaporate, so it's going to go bye-bye. But if you look at bread where it has a spongy texture, the little sponge bubbles, that was where the CO2 was, and that's what forced that bread to rise. Lactic acid fermentation, we're all familiar with, especially if you do any kinds of athletics, because when your muscles get that burning sensation after some very rigorous exercise, that's because you have a lack of oxygen in your muscles, so you have an oxygen debt. Your body, your muscle cells convert from aerobic respiration to anaerobic, and when it does that, it does lactic acid fermentation. The lactic acid is making that burn, and you'll notice that your sports performance isn't as good when those muscles are burning because you're not as efficient in making ATP, so you don't have enough power to make your muscles do what they normally do. All right, so let's look at these two pathways in a little bit more detail. Okay, this picture over here represents alcoholic fermentation, and this picture over here represents lactic acid fermentation. So let's write all over these guys. Let's use one of my favorite colors, green. Okay, now, the first step is glycolysis. Remember in glycolysis, you make a net gain of 2 ATP, and then you're going to make a pyruvic acid molecule, also known as pyruvate. 
Now we've got to go through the step called fermentation. When we do fermentation, we produce the waste product, or I'm sorry, alcoholic fermentation. You produce the waste product of CO2. This would be why the champagne would bubble. This is why the beer would bubble. And when you're doing this fermentation step, you're converting your NADH back into NAD+, so you can go back and make some more ATP. And then you have your second product, which would be called ethanol, and that would be the alcohol. Now, all alcohols end with an OL. All right. Now, over here we have lactic acid fermentation. You have the same thing. You're going to go through glycolysis. You're going to make ATP, and you're going to make pyruvate. Now we've got to regenerate our NAD+. And when we do that, we take our pyruvate, and we convert it into lactate or lactic acid. Okay? So this one will occur in some bacteria and in animal cells like your muscle cells. Now, if this worked, why doesn't our muscle cells go through alcoholic fermentation? The problem with that would be obvious. Every time that you would exercise, your body would be making alcohol and potentially getting drunk. Now, you can see how evolution would go against this. Imagine you're a gazelle on the savanna and you have a cheetah chasing you. As you began to ran, run away from that cheetah, your muscles would be producing alcohol. You would be getting a little tipsy and it would make it easier for the cheetah to catch you. Now, what if the cheetah's muscles are doing lactic acid or doing alcoholic fermentation? Well, as he's chasing the gazelle, he's getting drunk and he ain't going to catch anything. So he's not going to make it. So animals evolved this one where they could still function during vigorous exercise and be able to catch their food or run away from their food. All right, that's going to end this chapter on Chapter 9. Uh, make sure you study up for your celebration of knowledge so that you can do the best you can. All right, until our next chapter, we're going to catch you on the flip side.